sure. What did you learn? Mom says dinner's at six. Victory is mine! Oh! Oh, Stewie Griffin, the pint-sized diabolical genius we all love to chuckle at. From his grand schemes for world domination to his undeniable charm, Stewie has been a staple of laughter in the Family Guy universe. It's just, there's always been a lot of tension between Lois and me. And it's not so much that I want to kill her. It's just, I want her not to be alive anymore. But of course, there's more to this mischievous baby than meets the eye. Today, we're embarking on a journey through time, unraveling the intricate layers of Stewie's character. From his diaper-clad days of world domination to his unexpected emotional depths, Stewie Griffin's evolution is a captivating tale of growth, relationships, and unexpected hey, twists. I'm Stewie Griffin, and I'm going to be kicking my dad's ass all day today. So buckle up, because we're about to uncover the evolution of Stewie Griffin. From diabolical baby to... <laughs> well, you'll just have to watch and see. Come on! Come on, Stewie! You're acting crazy out there, man! We know him as Stewie, but his full name is Stuart Gilligan Griffin. Stewie's character was developed by the show's creator, Seth MacFarlane, who also does the voice of Stewie. Stewie is the flamboyant and eccentric one-year-old infant of Peter and Lois Griffin, brother to Chris and Meg Griffin. Mentally, he seems much older though, and in season 1, episode 2, he even proclaims to be shooting on a 5th grade level. Can you count to 3? Oh, indeed I can. 1, 2, 3! Can I count to 3? For God's sake, I'm already shooting at a 5th grade level. Stewie is well-spoken with an advanced vocabulary, an upper-class British accent and an ambiguous sexual orientation. He often refers to Peter as the fat man and his mother by a given name, Lois. Break up Lois and the fat man before they can conceive me. Early in the series, he was portrayed as being completely obsessed with world domination and killing Lois. Ah! Help! Somebody! I'm breaking out! Ah! 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 Ryan, help me! Ah! Excellent. The mind control device is nearing completion. Stewie, I said no toys at the table. Damn you, vile woman! You've impeded my work since the day I escaped from your wretched womb. Oh, don't pout, honey. You know, when you were born, the doctor said you were the happiest looking baby he'd ever seen. But of course, that was my victory day. The fruition of my deeply laid plans to escape from that cursed ovarian Bastille. Return the device, woman. No toys, Stewie. Very well, then. Mark my words. When you least expect it, your uppance will come. In Season 1, Episode 3, it was revealed that after Stewie's birth, the Doctor found a map of Europe with plans to bomb its capitals inside of Lois. He still wants to kill Lois and take over the world, but those goals have taken a back seat. Although in Season 16, Episode 12, he admits that he still likes to talk about them. The twins? No, it's a... The map of Europe. In his biggest confidant is his teddy bear Rupert. Like a wild animal, I had no way to defend myself. On the show, Stewie engages in extreme violent or criminal acts, including robbery, carjacking, loan sharking, forgery, and killing off many minor characters. The characters he kills off are for reasons such as anger, jealousy, and grudges he holds. Stewie's mastery of physics, mechanical engineering, and firearms are truly at a level of science fiction. He has constructed advanced fighter jets, a mind control device, weather control device, robots, a time machine, a shrinking pod, a teleportation device, and more. He often uses these to deal with the stresses of infant life, such as teething pain and his hatred of broccoli, or even to kill his mother. Stewie has a masochistic personality. We see this for the first time in Season 5, Episode 10, when Lois spanks Stewie for destroying her pearl necklace. Very well then, if I can't have it, nobody can! That is enough! Uh. 
He wants to confide to Rupert that he enjoyed the pain, and after that he goes out of his way to provoke Lois to spank him again. Oh, it was awful, Rupert. I felt terrified and brutalized and humiliated and... and... and alive. My God, I... I haven't felt that alive in years. Rupert, you know, I think perhaps I may be one of those people who gets a jolly out of being hit. He even had a daydream in which he was tortured by Lois, who was clad in a dominatrix outfit. There she is, Rupert. Oh, if I can just get her to hit me one more time, it'll give me the rush I've been looking for. Uh, <laughs> oh, what's next? What's next? What's next? Oh, God, I've been so bloody naughty. Oh, I need to be taught a lesson and you're the one to do it. Oh, thank you! Thank you! Yeah, all that stuff. Let's make that happen. The family member that's to be cared about most seems to be Brian. When Brian was killed by a car in season 12, episode 6, Stewie's devastation over Brian's death caused him to be cold and nasty towards Vinny, a replacement family dog, until Vinny told him that he understood what he was going through due to the death of his own previous owner. After that, Stewie bonded with Vinny. Do you want to know what's the matter? You're the matter! Everyone in this family is so damn thrilled with you, they've forgotten all about Brian! Well, I'm not thrilled! I'll never forget Brian. He was my best friend. When we talk about Stewie, the question that probably comes up most is whether or not the family and the other characters can actually understand him. Now, typically, the Griffin family appear to ignore most of what Stewie says, although on occasion they have responded to his speech. In Season 2, Episode 18, this is referred to as a meta joke. At the end of the episode, it's revealed that it's actually a historical video projected to a group of students in the future. One of the students comments with, I don't get it, so, uh, like, uh, can the family understand the baby or, or what's the deal with that? The other students are seen nodding in agreement with the apparent confusion. Any questions? Yeah, uh, I, I don't get it, so... Like, can the family understand the baby, or, or, or what, what's the deal with that? Brian can always understand him, though, and they often have conversations between themselves, including musical numbers, arguments, and bad advice. On the occasions when he speaks directly to Meg or Chris, they also sometimes reply. Do the talking. No, I think I can communicate with her better. She's only going to get the gist of what you're saying. Really? Isn't she one of those people outside the family who can understand me? In Season 4, Episode 2, a police officer is able to understand his speech when Stewie covers up for Lois hiding a body. Alright, wait here Stewie while Mommy gets the cement blocks. <gasps> Everything alright here? Oh, fine officer, just uh, enjoying the sunset. No law against that, is there? What happened to your shirt? Oh, you know, <laughs> just a pizza party at the office. Oh yeah? Where do you work? First Fidelity Insurance over on Way Bossett Street. Oh, my cousin Arnie works over there. In Season 1, Episode 3, Stewie talks to the cult leader, who understands fully what he says, not seeing him until seconds before Stewie kills him. Where are you? What do you want? Freedom! What do you want? I want to get the hell out of here! When the family adopted Vinny after Brian's death, he was able to understand Stewie perfectly, and throughout all the episodes with him, Vinny and Stewie exchange dialogue just like he does with Brian. Congratulations, you've won over a complete imbecile. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you just speak ill of the man who busts his tail providing for you? He spent my college fund on puppet clothes. Hey, don't get fresh with me, Estonio. Despite Stewie's obvious advanced intellect, he doesn't know much about sex. In Season 5, Episode 7, he even says he thinks sex is a kind of cake. You even know what sex is? That's not the point. They don't change the, It's a kind of cake. And on a couple of occasions throughout the series, he's absolutely horrified upon accidentally catching his parents in the act of lovemaking. Stewie, no! seems to be a closet bisexual. We see a lot of jokes during the series about Stewie and homosexuality. Stewie has also been seen frequently flirting with male characters in the series. And in several occasions, Stewie shows interest in Brian. Stewie has some kind of romantic or sexual fancy involving his stuffed toy, Rupert. Stewie sees him as an athletic man with a teddy bear's head. Stewie had several times referred to him as gay. Let's see where this goes. Wow, 
it went right there. When Peter starts collecting horse sperm in season 7 episode 8, he warns the family that some refrigerator containers contain sperm instead of milk. Oh, thanks for reminding me. Everyone, some of the milk in the fridge is not milk, it's horse sperm. I'm a horse breeder now. In season 7, episode 4, he is horrified at the sight of a nude woman's vagina in a pornographic magazine, even seizing a machine gun, firing upon and destroying the offending publication. Well, let's see what fascinating pubescent treasures Chris has got hidden away. Ooh, Hustler magazine. I finally get to see what a vagina looks like. Ah, ah, oh god! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> you can't hurt anyone anymore. Despite all the gay connections, we see Stewie begin straight on many occasions as well. In season 2 episode 15 he falls in love with a female toddler. Also Stewie has twice had a relationship with another young toddler slash beauty queen named Olivia. <laughs> There's also a gag in the series where Stewie throws sexy parties that involve many women in tight and revealing outfits. Which means I'd be free to throw some of my sexy parties. <laughs> Stewie has a very uniquely shaped head that none of the other Griffin family members have. In Season 3 Episode 19, Stewie did have a head shape similar to Meg's until he was bouncing on the bed and hit the ceiling, thus flattening it into the familiar football shape. Stewie, get down before you hurt yourself. Shut up! You're not my mother! Good God, are you alright? Fine, why do you ask? But despite that, in Season 1 Episode 3 there were flashbacks of Stewie in Lois's womb and the moment he was born and his head was already like that. In Gulag for nine grueling months. Day 171. I've sprouted another finger. Counting the one from yesterday, I'm up to 11. In a possible future, seen in season 4, episode 30, he has a 9 to 5 job at the Co op Circuit Shack at 35 years old. He's never had sex, he hasn't killed Lois, and he hasn't taken over the world. However, this may have been averted by younger Stewie's intervention. Uh, Stewie, I've never slept with any woman. I've never had sex. All right, that's it! I could handle the crappy apartment and the pedestrian job, but now you're telling me I'm a 35-year-old parade magazine reading virgin? Well, you, sir, are pathetic! So forget about sending me back, because I'm not leaving until we do a complete overhaul on this sad thing you call our life. I'm not sure if Stewie will ever kill Lois, take over the world, or end up a 35-year-old virgin. But whatever the future may hold for him, he will always be my favorite character in the show. We love you, Stewie.